Designing a test problem. A golf course architect designs golf holes to challenge golfers. Note these two large sand traps nearly surrounding the front side of the green. To get the ball onto the green in good position, the golfer has to either thread the ball between the traps or loft the ball over the protecting sand traps. Neither task is an easy one. Another instance, this golf hole, the 17th at Sawgrass, is legendary for being challenging. Any wonder? The green is surrounded by water. I read that 150,000 golf balls are removed from this lake each year. Metaphorically, the same things that go into a challenging golf hole apply to creating a challenging test problem, and those are elements that add to the degree of difficulty. I'm choosing to look at this problem today because it has a high degree of difficulty. If this were a golf hole, it would be one surrounded by sand, traps, and by water as well. This problem tests the student's ability to apply the principle of similar figures. A simple problem testing this concept might look something like this problem in red, one triangle transformed into another. For this problem in red, we just set up the proportion like this, h over 6 equals 20 over 12 as shown in blue above. To solve for h, cross multiply the 6. 6 times 20 is 120 and 120 divided by 12 is 10, so h equals 10. This was very straightforward, as simple as possible, nothing that should be confusing. If you see a problem like this, this easy, look for the tricks. When problems seem too easy, be suspicious. Now let's look at our original problem. First, the triangles are oriented differently. Even though similar, the larger triangle on the right is flipped horizontally from the one on the left. Secondly, there are these two line segments to confuse the issue by making these two triangles part of a larger quadrilateral. Third, in the original shape, there is a dimension labeled that is unneeded. We'll see later how this can be a real hazard to getting the right answer. And then, even though proportion must be used to solve the problem, the problem asks for the area of triangle VZW and not the length of the missing side of the triangle. And finally, the most hazardous part of the problem. All the answers except one are set up to take advantage of possible or even likely mistakes. And from here we'll try to solve the problem and show how three different possible mistakes lead to three out of the four answers. First we'll set up the proportion. This left side of triangle VZW is an unknown that we'll call N. And here's the proportion. N is to 6.75 as 6 is to 4.5. We can solve for n by cross multiplying the 6.75 by the 6, which gives us 6.75 times 6 divided by 4.5, and that gives us 9. And 9 happens to be the answer choice J. And here's that hook right next to the answer J. It has to be right, even though the calculator says it's right. See that fish biting? But J is not right because it's not the final answer, but just a preliminary answer because 9 is the length of the height of triangle VZW. We need to find the area of the triangle, so finding the height does not go far enough. Or, let's say that we set up our proportion as N over 6.75 equals 7.5 over 4.5. We cross multiply the 6.75, then divide 4.5 by 4.5 and get 11.25. And now we apply the formula for the area of a triangle, area equals 1 half base times height, and get 0.5 times 6.75 times 11.25. And that equals nearly 38. So since our answer here is closest to 38, is G our correct answer? After all, it says closest. For this answer, this is where the test writer tried to trick us. To get this answer, we had to put the 7.5 in the numerator, which is at the left side of the smaller triangle. But the similar side is 6, since the two triangles are flipped in orientation. Therefore, G is also an incorrect answer based on a likely mistake. For our last likely incorrect answer, let's say that we got the right proportion set up and got 9 for N, or the height, as before. Now let's say we use that formula, 1 half base times height, and forget to divide by 2. We get 60.75, which is closest to answer choice A. 
but I already gave it away. This one's wrong because we forgot to follow the formula for the area of a triangle, which is dividing the base times the height by 2. Now finally, for the correct way to do it, we get 30.375, and that finally is closest to answer H. And we circle it as our correct answer. Now let's ask ourselves the question, what did we learn from all the analysis of this problem? Consider that there is a seasoned professional test writer crafting his or her problem much like an expert golf course designer creates a challenging hole in golf. These test writers are experienced secondary math teachers, and in the state where I'm certified to teach secondary math, Texas, one of the areas tested to qualify as a teacher includes specific language, here underlined in blue, knows typical errors students make. Here's another type of problem where students commonly make mistakes and the test writers take full advantage of common mistakes to choose answers. This is what I call an expression equivalency problem. But unlike the hazards on the golf course, the hazards in a test problem may not be plainly visible or apparent. To give ourselves a better chance to be successful, we need to think like the test writer. Try to put yourself in a position of strength by figuring out where the test writer is trying to fool you or make things difficult for you. If you have enough time, check every answer. This has been Designing a Test Problem. Thanks for viewing.